Mr. Timothy is a simulator that is based on the CT scanning of uh, real patients and we have a library of different cases which are available uh, on this page either in this grid format or in the list which explains different pathologies uh, that you can use for training. I can also enter uh, the keyword like mitral uh, in the uh, search engine and then we can uh, find a group of patients with mitral pathology. So the case has been loaded and uh, here you can see the upper esophageal views with the big vessels visible. I'm now going down and uh, here you can see that uh, orifice of the left um, the main coronary artery with the bifurcation is visible. But at the same time, the uh, aortic uh, contour uh, became oval. So in order to uh, achieve the cross-sectional view of the aortic valve, I have to rotate to approximately 30 degrees. And now I can go down and see um, more uh, of the uh, aortic valve in the short axis with the three leaflets. But uh, I'm here interested in the mitral valve, so I will go to zero degree and go slightly deeper. And here we have the five chamber view, then four chamber view. And as you can see, there is a mitral valve prolapse visible here. So either I can scan it from mid-esophageal deep projection showing you the uh, posterior medial commissure here and pull it back showing now the center of the valve. Mm, of course, knowing that this is very oblique view, this is not on axis view and then we go to the five chamber view where probably we see P1A1 and the anterior, anterior lateral commissure. So to better visualize the valve I prefer to do the scanning in the on axis views. I will uh, retroflex the plane and you can see on the model that the plane is going down uh, becoming more and more coaxial with the left ventricle which is uh, positioned uh, with the apex uh, down and I'm now pulling it back to uh, um, obtain the image where the mitral annulus is the biggest possible in this valve. And I'm now rotating my probe right left to position the left ventricle in the center. And now I go to intercommissural view. Um, so I change the uh, search uh, angle to approximately 60. And here you can appreciate the papillary muscles, which I can uh, see uh, deep in the left ventricle, good contractility, and also the prolapse of most probably P2 segment of the mitral valve. I can check it either by increasing the angle to uh, more uh, to 152 in this case, because I had uh, 62 in the intercommissural. So if I add 90 it will give me 152 and now I have the long axis view of the uh, of the left ventricle and the uh, mitral valve so I can now activate the color mode uh, I should uh, change the baseline to uh, approximately 40 centimeters per second of Nyquist limit up and then you can see the nice PISA you can stop the image and you can also uh, select the frame so here I can measure the PISA diameter by uh, using the measurement function uh, and I place one uh, marker here and the other one on the PISA uh, and it's approximately one centimeter, almost one centimeter of uh, PISA diameter. I can of course uh, visualize it uh, better if I use the intercommissural view uh, here as I, I did before. Uh, positioning of the valve in the center is crucial to obtain a very nice long axis view in the X-plane mode. So I do it now and you can see here how nicely uh, we can observe the eccentricity of the jet and also uh, the fact that the jet is uh, limited only to the P2 prolapse. So there is no other jets. Uh, I can scan it uh, by ro slight rotation anterior and posterior and I cannot see any other jets uh, which would be present here. So this is isolated P2 prolapse. Um, here I turned off the color and uh, here you can see we have the 3D mode. Of course I have to adjust the gain as we do in normal echo machine and then 
I can uh, zoom it, I can rotate it in, in uh, Z axis and by playing with the uh, trackball I can move the uh, model, uh, rotate the model, see where is the left atrial appendage on the left hand side, where is the aortic valve and obviously I can also use the uh, markers as I did in other cases to mark the intercommissural view here and uh, the long axis view in the other plane and appreciate how it corresponds to the 3D model. I can see that I'm slightly off axis with my yellow plane so I can come back and I can slightly modify it by putting the, the line in the center here and I will mark it with the next marker which will be the green one and I hope I'm now coaxial with the uh, center of the prolapse. So this is a very good tool to practice how we should obtain orthogonal on-axis images of the mitral valve.